The large hats worn by the ladies during this era sometimes had to be affixed with hat pins up to a foot long. The train of the dress flows elegantly as the Edwardian lady walks with her parasol on the arm of her Edwardian escort. With her typical day wear made of either white linen or cotton. Not only was this style affordable, but it was very comfortable. This Edwardian wear was beautifully embellished with mini lace inserts, cutouts, tucks, and elaborate embroidery. This particular skirt belongs here to the courthouse collection and is a spectacular example of this Edwardian style. Bree's wearing a straw hat, which is a type of a hat often worn by the ladies of this time. Trish is breaking the January cold in his Neptune's daughter bathing suit, typical of the era. It is made of wool. So that's a little consolation for the chilly weather, I suppose. This suit is actually one piece with the bloomers attached. She is wearing a moppet on her head and has a parasol to protect against the sun. This item is also in the historic courthouse collection. I'm glad I don't have to wear one of those. Ted is escorting Rita, who is wearing an Edwardian afternoon tea dress adorned with every French lace overlaying the entire box of the dress. The French three-quarter length sleeves are gathered at the elbow and then gently flounces to the wrist. Rita is wearing a typical flower hat and also gloves and a barrel purse worn over the wrist. Britton and her daughter Sylvie are dressed for an evening out. Britton in a tunic of black wool and silk embossed uh, gold floral design. Sylvie is in a white cotton lawn dress carrying her beaded purse and wearing crocheted gloves.
With the end of World War I in 1918 and the 19th Amendment passing the very next year, the feeling of freedom mixed with the disillusionment of the war years combined to create a new kind of culture, a live for today, devil may care society called the Roaring Twenties and the Jazz Age. Prohibition played a huge part of the carefree lifestyle in this era, and the most recognizable 20s style is the blacker girl with the feminine silhouette slimmer and adorned with rock lace dresses and looser fitting clothing. The raised hemline shocked traditionalists. Coco Chanel designs have come to epitomize the 1920s styles, which was seen as revolutionary and quite modern. Short cloth hair became all the rage too, making the cloche hat a much better look and fit. My grandmother, who lived in Southern California, had to get on the streetcar and go to Los Angeles to find a hairdresser in 1920 who would cut her hair without her husband's permission. <laughs> <laughs> Nina is wearing a pink silk dress, sleeveless dress, straight out of the 1920s era. Beautiful inlays of delicate French lace throughout the bodice and skirt give the dress an elegant appeal. Bare arms were becoming acceptable in this age, quite the contrast with the accordion era. Nina's hat is a matching plume, all the rage at that time. Laura and her daughter Sophie are modeling today. Laura is in a cotton beach pajamas. This was casual attire, probably worn over a bathing suit. Sophie is in a peach, peach silk ruffled frock with a peach velvet cloche. Andy is wearing yet another example of the Roaring Twenties in this longer straight dress with fringe at the hem. Around Andy's shoulders is a 1920s crepe shawl with French knotted long fringe. Her cloche hat was a must for the stylish 20s gap. Jaina and Tyler are ready for the outdoor games in their furs and tires. Full-length coats were worn by men during this era. I think we've got to come up the stairs here. Put that big coat on. And here we go. The full-length coats were worn by men during this era, as well as worn by ladies. Jane is in a short black skirt, wearing a sealskin black jacket, quite unique because it has somewhat of a peplum flare at the waist. The three-quarter length sleeves necessitate carrying a muff to keep warm. <laughs> Claire is wearing another of the typical styles in the 20s, a chiffon shorter dress with a feeding effect at the knee neck. Claire is carrying a rare but beautiful painted purse of that era, and she pops off the outfit with a flowered cloche hat and purple gloves. And that's a spectacular purse. Julie, in this crepe dress, sorry, Michelle is wearing this sleek, elegant, long, velveteen gray dress that seems to just shimmer. The dress is bias cut, which is quite common for that area, giving the garment an elephant, an elephant, an elegant fit. <laughs> the unique sleeves give this gown a special effect, not found in many garments of the era. Michelle's blue red hat gives a bit of bright color to this gorgeous gown.
Use blocks. We advise gentle blocks for the best results shown on these pages. The first synthetic fibers were developed in the 30s, and in 1935, DuPont introduced nylon. Also, the zipper's popularity continued during the 30s, as first known as the slide fastener, until BF Goodrich coined, Goodrich coined the name zipper. Prominence of the zipper in manufactured clothing increased toward the end of the decade, primarily as a side closing. skirt and the belt at the waistline. The jacket shows a leaf design, giving the outfit an elegant appeal. Anna is wearing a Hattie Carnegie Gold May hat from the Field Schlick Department Store in St. Paul. Julie in this crepe dress shows she had a different style worn by the ladies in the 1920s. An evening dress with flowing panels and swapping at the shoulder and sequins galore. Julie's pheasant feather cloche hat is the perfect accent to this type of dress. <coughs> Becky is wearing a black print street link dress with a stylish black shell adorned uh, hat adorned with a red feather. Marie is wearing a more formal ankle-length lace dress with a high neck and a bit of see-through netting in the bodice. A beaded sequin hat and purse are the perfect accessories for Marie's evening attire, which is, of course, completed with a mink stole to keep her baby stylish and warm. Michaela is wearing a 1930s jersey knit jacket with a peplum waist. Her stylish wing hat is plumed with monkey hair, which was used quite often as a clothing during this era. Michaela's crazy flare skirt offers a bit of flourish to the more structured jacket. Sarah is ready to go to the office in her three-piece mustard and gray Carlisle suit, made of wool and a jersey knit top. Her mustard yellow gloves and purse go well with her spectator shoes. Hannah is wearing a navy blue and white polka dot rayon dress that the lady of the 1930s would be wearing for any afternoon in formal affair. The collar is trimmed in white riprap, and she wears ruffled gloves with her beaded purse and sensible shoes worn during that era. Anne is in an elegant satin lounging gown, just right for an afternoon of reading and relaxing. The waist is cinched with weave through belting that leaves the back of the gown full and flowing. So typical of the beautifully made 1930s lounging garments. Come a long way to sweatshirts and sweatpants. <laughs> <laughs> Lily is bringing the 1930s to a close as Snow White, who came to life on the big screen, thanks to Walt Disney in 1938. Her dress is filled with a full chiffon skirt. The decades of the 1930s saw many improvements in mass production techniques, which meant a wide range of women's well-made and well-cut clothing. However, the outbreak of World War II in 1939 in Europe and in 1941 in the U.S. brought a abrupt halt to this wide access to clothing manufacturers who were retooling for wartime manufacturing. The general wartime fashion scene was somewhat muted compared to the 20s and the 30s. There was an austere atmosphere, and people were encouraged to make do in men. Grace is wearing a Jane Earl designed to be lived in wool knit suit. It's very practical, versatile, and comfortable. The top has a basket weave design in the bodice, and the skirt has a cable knit design. This very stylish Chandra hat is made of silk and red feathers. Note the glasses design on the top of the suit. Britain and Sylvia are modeling very typical styles for both in the decades of the 40s. The muted blue-gray jacket is beautifully constructed for a fine fit 
with a black wool skirt uh, and soutache trim. Sylvie's wearing a Rothschild red wool coat, a wonderful example of what this of the clothing manufactured for children. <laughs> Annie is wearing a very simple but beautiful sleeveless gown, typical of the 1940s dancing dress. The material has a shimmer which would look great on the dance floor. All of Annie's accessories are of a contrasting navy blue. Her hat is a jewel of New York. Anna is wearing a stylish dress with a full taffeta skirt and an organdy bodice, beautifully embellished with gold threads. The Peter Pan collar is velvet. Anna is accessorized in gold and is wearing a hat from Field Schlick. Jenny 
state, also known as Maryland, is modeling one of our gorgeous 1950s dresses. The full skirt was flattering, making the, west, the waist seem very small and feminine. This atomic print is a favorite of Maryland. She is also the hairstylist for our fashion show today.
She's accessorized with ruffled black gloves and velvet ankle pie shoes and a little black purse. Morgan and Emily bring the 1950s to an end with their oh so popular poodle skirt, the epitome of the young girls of this era. When you think of 50s fashions, this is probably what most remember the poodle skirt. The 1960s featured a number of diverse trends. A decade that broke many fashion traditions, mirroring social movements at the time, and of course the emergence of baby boomer teens. The fashion in the early years of this decade reflected the elegance of the First Lady, Jacqueline Kennedy, wearing a pillbox hats and suits with boxy jackets and shift dresses. Mid-decade, the mini dress roared into the scene with the British influence of the Beatles and finally the hate Ashbury hippie skies. Grace is wearing a Raleigh Minneapolis copper dress made with beautiful sheen fabric. Accessorizing this fox style dress is a sparkly multicolored circle hat and also very colorful shoes to pull in the various colors that go so well with this collar. Jan is wearing a black velvet party dress with large chiffon shirt collar. She's also wearing a small velvet hat stylishly to the side of her head. Atop her party dress is a long satin coat, just the right touch for an evening out on the ground. Debbie just came in from the ski slope and is attired in a short houndstooth jacket with a large paw fur cuffs on the three quarter length sleeves. The neck has a pull through closure to keep out the snow and, open while in the, and keep it open while in the ski chalet. Her fur hat and boot shoes are the perfect for the weekend on the slopes. Andrea is wearing a stunning gunny sacks long lace dress with stand up collar and netted ruffled bodice. The long sleeves are sheer with ruffles at the wrists. The dress had ties in the back of the waist. Andrea is wearing matching tie shoe boots. All I wanted in high school was a gunny snatch dress. <laughs> McKenna is wearing a silver Evelyn Pearson launching apparel pant dress. The dress has an empire waist adorned with silver and gold brocade. McKenna is wearing a stylish silver fedora hat to blend with the silver dress. Or not. <laughs> Nicole is wearing a lovely party dress by Judy Gibbs with a pleated chiffon skirt and brown bodice. Her waist is bejeweled along with a sparkly bolero jacket. Jan is wearing a black velvet party dress with large... Oh, so sorry again. Stacy is wearing a beautiful circle skirt in dusty blue with a flower design, also with a boat neck black top. Stacy's wearing a lavender mini dress with puff chiffon sleeves accented with daisies and rhinestones. And so do the 60s.
has been here for weeks, uh, along with her friend Trish, as they sorted clothes, put together the ensembles, got them on the right tracks and the right rooms for the right people. They recruited all of the models and everything, found all the accessories. So when Mary comes up again, we'll give her a big round of applause, but we're going to uh, have a grand finale with all of our people up here in the front. Thank you. 